love how that turned out. I was able to print another uh, print that I was gonna put on a tote bag. Got my grid wall here with my little totes. But there's been a lot of market drama, so I'm filling in on all that later. I am all set up and ready to go. Welcome to my channel. My name is Bailey and I'm the owner of Goo Goo Kids. So this vlog is another crafter vlog. I have three crafters this week. I have one on Wednesday, one on Saturday, and one on Sunday. So today is actually Tuesday. I took kind of a rest day yesterday and so that means that my first one is tomorrow. So my crafter tomorrow is actually kind of a smaller one than ones I've been typically doing. So I just have the space for like an eight foot table. Um, I don't have an eight foot table so I'm just going to use my six foot table and then I'm also going to use my grid wall for my setup. So to pack for that tonight, I'm just going to prepare like two, maybe three of my totes full of stuff. I don't think I'm gonna bring any of my apparel. I think I'm just going to focus on my tumblers and my hats and my scrunchies, maybe. Um, I'll have to think about if I wanna bring a couple of apparel items, so I will think about that. So that's all the prep I gotta do for tomorrow, and I thought I would start today by going over my to-do list. Okay, so this week I'm going to sew some Christmas scrunchies. I'm going to sublimate some totes. So if you watched last week's vlog, I got a printer to make the sublimation printer and I ordered some totes to sublimate on that should be here hopefully this week. I ordered totes last week and it turns out they are not gonna be good for sublimation. I'm just going to embroider on these because you have to have polyester fibers in your fabric in order to sublimate and this is like 100% cotton. So I'm going to embroider on this and I was going to do that today but I'm not going to be able to and I'll explain that in a second. So I need to embroider those tote bags like how it's talking about. I need to applique the winter sweatshirts which is I think what we're going to start working on today. I need to order some more of the tumblers because I am pretty much completely out of the uh, like the floral bouquet tumblers, the cream one. So I need to do that. I just have one of those floral bouquet tumblers, like I was saying. And then I also need to send out the pre-orders of the Sunshine Club, the Florida Sunshine Club, and the Manatee Fan Club, um, because those will be here Friday after much ado. They are finally gonna be here, so that's really exciting. And I also need to go take some stuff to the Small Collective Co. in Apopka, because I'm out of tumblers there. So I'm gonna take um, some more replacement of the Mama tumblers and some of the new tumblers that I got. So I think that's most of what I want to get done this week. I'll probably have some more things that I'll throw in here and there. So let's just go ahead and get started by doing some applique. So originally during nap time, I was going to embroider on these guys, but my design was actually digitized a little bit too big, so I can't use it on my machine. So I'm just going to have to wait for that to get fixed and sent to me. But to start my embroidery, I think I'm going to press my sweatshirts to get the wrinkles out, but then I'm also going to press it down the middle to get my midline so that I know when I put it on here where the middle is. So yeah, so let's get to pressing some sweatshirts. Also kind of a little womp womp uh, related to the auto heat press. Nothing bad about the auto heat press, but I was researching like power banks that I could use to take my auto heat press to do like the DIY uh, shirt stations at events. If you've been watching, I've been like thinking about doing that. Um, so I've been researching the power banks that you can take and this actually just takes up like so much power that I think I would have to get like a gas generator or something like that to use it. So it's just not gonna work out, which is very disappointing. So I'll just have to use the DTF prints and sublimate all here, like at my house, which is fine. But I was really excited to try that out. Shade of blue 
long till we arrive the coming day Please ignore my restless face Cause it's so hard to keep it all together Ever since we left I guess it just makes sense to what the reasoning was When I said in case I go No need to be stressed Got a ticket, won't get stayed I really miss the shade So that is what it is looking like. I think it turned out really, really good. I still obviously need to like cut the stabilizer on the back, but I think that that looks so cute. I was really nervous about getting the fabric out of here because I really just had to use like an awl, which is like a really pokey pointy thing to like get underneath it because I didn't want to poke a hole in the actual shirt. I considered just leaving the fabric in there, but I think it was a good idea to take it out. But yeah, I think that looks super good. It is actually the afternoon right now. I wasn't able to film uh, going over the sweatshirt earlier because the boys actually woke up from nap while it was in the middle of embroidering. But this afternoon, I think I'm gonna run by Joann's right now because I would like to get some fabric for another endeavor. So let's go ahead and head out. Okay, so I'm looking for something that has a high polyester content and these Symphony ones are 65% polyester. I'm thinking I want like kind of like a beigey color eggshell. So I'm actually going to be sublimating on it. That's why I want such like a high like polyester content. And I think I'm probably gonna need to go with like a lighter color just to make any colors that I print pop. So let me see what I can find. This is what my cart is looking like right now. Got these for my kiddos. So cute, on sale. And I got that fabric. I got some more thread. I probably should get more thread than that, but I expect myself to be back here and I got this strapping in the cellophane. And if you said you knew what I was making, you would probably be lying because I doubt you'll be able to figure it out until I start it. But make a guess now and see if you're right. If you are, you're smart. Good Lord, crazy. Okay, so please tell me why I thought these were coffins. Okay, here's a more in-depth analysis of what I got. I got this cellophane wrap and I got, these are unrelated to anything. This is just for fun. These little like, they're like cookie stamps, but I think I'm gonna use them for Play-Doh with the boys. And then I got a yard of just this like polyester blend rod cloth. And I also got more white thread. And I also got this like, it's called belting or strapping. I also got some of that. So that is my haul. I probably won't be doing anything with this tonight. I'll probably just be doing the applique some more, but I will do stuff with it tomorrow. Or actually I may not do anything with it tomorrow because tomorrow I've got the market and it starts at six, but setups like at 3.30. So I guess I'll have time. Maybe I'll try to work on it tomorrow during nap, but I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time. So maybe not. Okay, 
going on happy wednesday so i kind of got a late start on doing stuff today it is 1:49. i actually just you know took the car seats out of the car and loaded it with all of the stuff that i'm taking i'm not taking too much stuff to my market today just because i only have like kind of like a small table space and it's indoors so i don't need my tent and i don't really need all my apparel items so yeah i just packed my tumblers my hats and my scrunchies and i also packed the um the manatee sweatshirt and the florida sweatshirt just so i can like show people like oh like you know this is going to be here on friday and so if they want to order it for me to send it to them or if they want me to uh, do like a pickup order on saturday or sunday i can do that but last night when i got home from joann's i just worked on the second of the mary applique shirts so i got that done i still just need to like cut the stabilizer out I was going to start working on doing some more applique today, but I realized I was at a cutaway stabilizer or that I was low on it. So I had to order that. So that's not going to be here till tomorrow and set up for the market actually begins today at 3.30. So Ethan should be here within the next like hour or so. So I don't have a ton of time to do anything. So what I've decided to do with this time is I'm just going to mark all of my sweatshirts so that I know how to hoop them when it's time. So I think that's just going to be some good prep work to get it out of the way so that when it's time to actually hoop it and get ready for applique, I don't have to worry about doing that. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. Know what it's like Felt this before You don't feel right When your head feels sore But it's so fine To feel this way Don't waste your time On such a sunny day So my boys are starting to wake up from nap. So I was able to press and get a couple of sweatshirts marked. And I also wanted to go ahead and press all of those toe bags so that tomorrow I can potentially put those on the machine and stitch them out. Because I had the design that I was going to stitch out on them yesterday re-digitized, like re-sized by Z-digitizing to make it the right size to go in my hoop. So I'll work on that tomorrow. And I just wanted to make sure that they were all like, you know, flat and good to go. So I am going to go get my kids and I will check in with you later at the craft fair. And this craft fair, I'm not too stressed about it just because I don't have a ton of stuff that I'm bringing. So setup and breakdown will be pretty easy. And I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film my setup and breakdown because since it's inside, I don't really know kind of like what the setup is going to be and if I'm going to be able to put up my tripod or anything. Um, also, I don't have high hopes for this one just because this is kind of very similar to that event I did a couple weeks ago where I didn't make money so I'm just trying to like not get like too hyped up about it or like I guess I'm not trying to get my hopes up I'm just trying to be chill about the whole thing because I don't think it's gonna go super great so I'm not stressed but I'm just not getting too crazy about it but I will check in with you when I get there This next clip is gonna be a little bit silly because I went to use the restroom and it's like a normal restroom, but it's a public bathroom. And I was looking around, I was like, oh, what a nice little bathroom. And then I noticed communal hand towel, not in a public restroom, no thank you.
So I am all set up and ready to go. Right now it's 4.36 and the market officially begins at five. So I've got a lot of time. Obviously like packed really, really light. So like I don't have any of my apparel except for the manatee and the Florida sweatshirt. So I just have that and I actually have two of the cream tumblers. I thought I only had one. So that was a pleasant little surprise that I got. Um, it was a little bit tricky trying to figure out how I wanted to have the, um, the grid wall because I had the apparel on it or like in two pieces of apparel on it. So I kind of had to like do differently from what I usually did. So I ended up putting the scrunchies on the table, which is not bad, but it was just, I had to do it on the fly, I guess. But I'm, I've never been here to O-Town Provisions, so I don't really understand or like know exactly where like the brewery part is or like where people are because I don't know if it's supposed to be in here or maybe it's just closed and it's gonna open at five. I don't really know because right now, obviously it's just like vendors getting set up, but I don't see where you can order beer. There's a lot of boar's head stuff. So I don't know if it's like, maybe I'm not in a brewery. Hold on, let me Google it. Y'all, I am so dumb. There's a reason there's like a bunch of like boar's heads truck. I was like, man, like O-Town Provisions is like really like into boar's head products. This is not a brewery. This is a distributor of Boar's Head products. This whole time, I 100% thought that this was a brewery and I thought people were coming for food trucks and beer, but no, I don't exactly know what people are coming for. Yeah, so interesting. I guess this is where people come and like pick up food. I don't really know what it is, so I will check in later once things have gotten started because I don't really know how this is gonna roll because I also don't know where people are gonna park. I don't want to start off a little bit negative, but it's hard to not be negative when like the last time I did a market had some of this, it was like the worst one I've ever done and I don't really know how this would be much better because I'm telling you, I don't know what this is all about. Maybe I should have done more research. I don't know. Well, let's hope it goes good. I'll check in later. I thought I would do a little tour. So out here are the food trucks and then you go up this ramp. To just put some music over this because uh, he's singing some songs. So this market is going to have no updates for me at the actual market because it was so incredibly loud that you would not have been able to hear me at all. This market was definitely another bust for me, unfortunately. There was not really any foot traffic at all, and I've definitely learned that these midweek markets with Orlando local makers do not work out for me at all. The booth fee wasn't that high, but for the effort it takes to prepare and set up and break down, I don't think I can justify the time commitment and the risk to do these ones ever again. So that's kind of unfortunate. I felt bad for this vendor right here because I'm pretty sure I heard her say that she drove an hour to come to the event and she sells a lot of handmade concrete goods. So I know that that's probably not a super easy and like it's a very heavy weight thing to have to pack up and then travel that far to bring. So yeah, so I felt really bad about that. I'll talk about this later on, but yeah, the venue was just really odd because in my opinion, there'd be no reason for anyone to come here unless they were seeking someone who was vending here out. So it was just kind of weird. There were a couple of groups of people, but it kind of just seemed like the same people over and over again. Like I don't know if it's like people who were like, workers here or related to people who are vending so it's just kind of the same groups coming in and out this shot right here pretty much shows a more accurate representation of how many people were actually there that evening so yeah it was just really loud and really just not good happy thursday so i don't know how much editing me would have talked about this so i thought i would do like a little overview of last night's market and tell you how it went so just like the previous market that was like it i also came out at zero dollars which i knew going into it was probably going to be what was happening and i could tell from the moment i pulled up to unload that it was not going to be positive because the first thing the instructions told me to like go to this one part of the parking lot and when I went there, there were no other cars, but there were a bunch of like boar's head trucks. And I pulled in there and it's exactly where I was supposed to be because it was described to be exactly where I was. And there was a boar's head truck driver trying to pull into that area and he started getting really mad at me. And I was like, I'm sorry, like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go because my instructions say to park here to unload. And then like I talked to like the owner of the O-Town Provisions and he was really, really nice. And he like showed me like a different place to be. And he said that 
the instructions that I had were correct for the last event, but this event we're supposed to park somewhere else. So that was crazy. But yeah, when I pulled up, I originally thought that O-Town Provisions was a brewery. And when I pulled up, there wasn't really any parking. Like there wasn't like a parking lot. There were just like a couple of spaces in front and that's where the food truck vendors were setting up. And then I went in and as I was setting up, I was like, I'm not seeing anywhere that's like brewery like. I'm not seeing like, you know, when you go to a brewery, there's like a tasting room or like you see evidence that there is beer being brewed there or that they're at least storing the beer there. I didn't see any of that. And then so when I looked it up, I saw that, yeah, it basically it's a meat and cheese warehouse that stores all of the Boar's Head products. If you're not familiar with Boar's Head products, they're just like deli meats. You can find them at like Publix or just like delicatessens. I was like, oh, like I'm just in a warehouse where they store and like send out these like deli meats. So that's really weird because like that's not a place that people are going to organically. Like a brewery, like people are coming to like, you know, get their drinks and obviously if there are food trucks there, they're coming to eat. But there would be no reason for you to go to O-Town Provisions to go to this market unless you specifically knew you were going to this market. So there was hardly any foot traffic. I'm talking like maybe, I'm gonna say less than 10 groups of people came, which is not very good. And kind of the way I was set up, I thought it was gonna be a good place because I was kind of like right in the middle. There's supposed to be like three or four other vendors that were behind me in my space, but all of them I guess bailed. So I thought when people would walk in, they would go straight to my table, but kind of what ended up happening was people would come and they would start on the edge and essentially like make a circle around and then leave and never actually really look at me or look at my booth. But I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal because there wasn't really anyone to begin with. So I kind of knew that was gonna happen and I talked to like another vendor friend like on Instagram who's doing like an event somewhere else and she said the last time she was there, she also made nothing and there was no one there. So that was a little bit, I mean, I knew going into it that it wasn't gonna be super good. I guess I, I wanted to have high hopes, but I think that like just, it's not a good place for it. And kind of like in the middle of the week, it's kind of random. Like, I don't know who's like going to shop at like 8.30 on a Wednesday where you can't even park. So that was really stressful, but I had some vendor friends that are also like market organizers. Um, they're together and they have like a child and they came in and I actually had to go outside because it was so loud This is also okay. This was also another really big problem. The music he was really really good But it was really loud and he took like no breaks like I'm saying this guy went full-on for like the four hours or whatever He took maybe like a five-minute break in the last like, 30 minutes But he was he was really really good But it was so loud that even if you wanted to talk to a customer they couldn't hear you there'd be no way if anyone ever came up to me i'd be like let me know if you have any questions and they'd be like what and so it's just kind of like if you can't even talk to the person standing on the other side of the table like the music's too loud and so like my vendor friends came and they had their baby and their baby like could not be in that space it was way too loud for their baby to come in there so i ended up going outside and talking to them for a little bit um, but some positive things that did come out of it, there was another vendor that they did tea and at the end of the night they like came and like were bringing everyone tea and there was a hot dog vendor that came and brought like me a hot dog and I like, it was like in the last like 10 minutes and it was a huge hot dog. It was like humongous. So I went and I gave that hot dog to the tea people. I said a hot dog for some tea. Um, so they were really, really nice and they were really, really liked the hot dog so that's really good. But all that to say last night did not go super good so i hope that the weekend's markets kind of make up for that but today for nap time i actually am going to pack an order to send out um i have a diaper bag backpack order that i need to send out so i'm gonna do that i don't know what else i'm gonna be planning on working on this afternoon um so i'm gonna pack that order and i'm still waiting for some cutaway to be delivered so that's supposed to be here between like 3 30 and like 7. So that's not gonna be a nap time thing. That could be an afternoon thing, not nap time. I'm considering setting up my sublimation printer today, but I have to put up the heat press, but I wanted to have the heat press out. It's like a whole thing. So I might do the sublimation printer, but I know the first thing that I'm definitely gonna start with is packing this order. So let's just go along with it and see where the afternoon takes us. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is write my thank you card. 
So this order is going to someone, I don't know if it's their first name or their last name, it's just Hughes. So Hughes from Indiana. Thank you. Put that in there. They ordered a dolly bag, I didn't say that. So they ordered a dolly bag and then I'm gonna put my little sticker. It says your order has been packed on YouTube. sticker on out the door so I've decided to work on trying out some sublimation stuff today or at least kind of get in the process of printing out some of the papers because it might need to print a couple times just to like fully get the ink I guess like saturated in the machine so I've got my printer plugged in and I'm about to fill the ink and I'm a little bit nervous because I'm afraid that I'm a little bit clumsy and might spill ink so I think all we have to do is just go ahead and just be brave and do it. The sublimation ink that I got is just from Amazon and it's the Hippo brand and it basically hooks up the same way normal ink does. Okay so now it's charging the ink for the next 11 minutes so when that's done I guess I will do some test sheets. Finally, after a lot of time and effort, I got it connected to my computer. It was not wanting to like set up like the Wi-Fi. It like, wasn't wanting to connect to the computer. It's like a whole thing. And then kind of randomly when I was about to give up, it decided to do it. So I'm going to print out this test page and see how it goes. So this is the brand of paper that I got. It's the same brand as the um, Sublimation Ink, the Hippo brand. I just got it on Amazon. So I'm supposed to load it like that. So let's hope that this goes good. Okay, so yeah. I think they said to say that it's premium matte. So I'm printing like the Monster Mash. And I'm going to try to put that on a tote bag. So let's see how it goes. Dun, da, da, da. So I finally did it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so when you print like sublimation stuff, it doesn't look as vibrant as it does when like you put it down like on your like fabric or your substrate or whatever so yeah I think it's gonna look really really good when I press it it says that you're supposed to let it dry for 20 minutes before you press it so I do not have 20 minutes left of nap time because they are starting to wake up so I'm gonna have to finish pressing that um, later this afternoon but I am so so glad that that worked out good because I was really worried so it's taking me a really long time to connect to the printer so it was like a whole like odyssey but yeah they're starting to wake up but thank thank goodness i'm really excited that that worked out and i will show you later on how it looks on a tote bag it's thursday night and i'm about to do my practice sublimation print i've got my polyester tote bag and i got this like really huge roll of butcher paper from amazon to cover it I've got my heat tape and i've got my uh lint roller so let's go ahead and try it out don't know what I'm feeling, don't know how to keep my thoughts straight, yeah. You got me second guessing, thinking that I made a mistake, but inside, feel so nice. Butterflies, Whoa. love how that turned out. I think it looks so good. How cute. Oh, so spooky. I love that. So I think I might make two of these maybe. I might make uh, one more of this print and then two of the Yeehaw to take to the markets on Saturday and Sunday. But oh my gosh, I'm so happy that that worked out. 
So I think tonight probably what I'm going to do is I have to film something unrelated to this channel. It's like for like a different company. Um, but I'm going to maybe print two or three more of these uh, sublimation sheets because I have to let them dry. And then I'm also going to do a test embroidery on the other tote bags. So let's do that. Emotions I can't use. Oh no, it's nothing can I'm not really doing anything that I said I was going to do tonight because I just embroidered this because this was actually pretty hard to do so this may be the only one of these that I make and I'm gonna give it to my Nana um, so the I wanted to make it really really big so I used like my biggest like mighty hoop that I had and because it was so big when I put it on the machine if, when it was like fully hooped there'd be no way for the machine to move around so I did something like kind of complicated so I put the cutaway in there and I basted it with like the basting adhesive and then I hooped this like like water soluble topper so I hooped that in the mighty hoop and I put basting adhesive on this and I also like pinned it so I pinned the water soluble topper that was hooped to my fabric and kind of just like held on to it while I moved around so it made it a lot more time consuming because I couldn't really walk away and it was really stressful so I will show you what it looks like but I don't think there's going to be more embroidered these anymore. I think I'm just going to have to do DTF or whatever because these are cotton so I can't sublimate it so I'll show you what it looks like though. I mean, guys, I'm ready to It'll also look better once I like spray it with a little bit of water I think to get the Popper off of the places that don't rip up automatically. Okay. Yeah, so that's what it looks like right now. It's obviously going to look better once I get the rest of this topper off, but I think it looks really, really good. I mean, it definitely it was just a lot of work and I don't know if I'm like willing to put in that much effort for these little tote bags because I mean like that took like 40 minutes on my machine, but it took me what like 20 minutes to figure out how to get it on the machine. So yeah, so probably not worth it to do the embroidery, but I think my Nana will definitely love this. Happy Thursday. So something really exciting was delivered today. So I got all of my Manatee and my Florida Sunshine Club uh, pullovers in today. So I'm going to go ahead and pack some of the pre-orders. One of the pre-orders, I, for some reason in my notes, I don't have their address listed. So I had to email her and get her address. But I've got a couple that I can pack up. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first order I'm going to pack is for Lucy. And Lucy got a medium of the Manatee Fan Club sweatshirt. So I'm going to put my little thank you so much for your support. Your order was packed on YouTube. With that I'm gonna go up here in this little corner. I think I'm actually going to one's going to Lucy. The next order I'm packing up is going to Colleen and she got the extra large Flora Sunshine Club sweatshirt. Oh, I forgot to put my Find Me on YouTube sticker on there. I'm going to put it up here in the corner. Colleen is ready to go. 
The next order is going to Tara, and she also got a Manatee Fan Club sweatshirt in an extra large. I'm gonna put my your order was packed on YouTube. Ta-da! Tara's is ready to go. So these are all the pre-orders that I'm going to pack on YouTube. So let's go ahead and get to sublimating. So I'm a little bit of a grumpy gut right now because I was able to print another uh, print that I was gonna put on a tote bag, but then the printer just like stopped connecting and like then it printed it out really bad twice, I'll show you. It printed it out like this like three separate times. It just kind of like started and then it would stop. Like I don't really know like what's going on. It just like keeps like unconnecting with my printer and then I'll like click to like redo it again. I don't know what's going on. So that's like really frustrating. So I got one good print today and that's it. And then three waste. Pretty much most of my plans for nap went out the window because I just spent the last like hour and a half troubleshooting the printer. And really just turns out that the Wi-Fi is just like not strong enough in that room that the printer like kept disconnecting from the computer and then I couldn't like ever reconnect it. So I'll show you what I had to do and it's like, it's okay, it's kind of annoying, but it'll do. I just had to bring the printer back into um, my old filming room. So now I guess it's just gonna have to live in here, but it seems like it's finally working and Hopefully it doesn't stop like right there because that's kind of where it was stopping the last three or four times where it messed up. But I think this is gonna work because it actually did connect to the Wi-Fi when I used the password in the other room. It wouldn't even connect with the password. So yeah, hopefully that does better. So unfortunately that's all I'm gonna be able to get done because they are waking up. So later on today, I need to drop off the orders and try to get these sublimated because I would like to be able to pack them to take them to the she sells market tomorrow. So tonight I'm gonna try to do that and I'm probably also gonna have to like repack all of my bins to get them ready so that I can fit everything in my car. Um, so I'm gonna work on that and also to prepare my house because my in-laws are coming tomorrow to visit us for Halloween and like for my kid's birthday that was last week. So yeah, hopefully tonight it goes better. It's a little bit later in the day, um, so I'm going to go ahead and sublimate some more tote bags. I was able to successfully print out a couple more of the I'll Take Them Devil. So let's just go ahead and get these bags made. those turned out that is amazing so I probably showed like a billion of these but I'll do a little close-up of them look I'll take them deviled so cute that looks so good and then the other one beside the monster mash I did was like the little yeehaw yeah so I absolutely love how those turned out so all I need to do with those now are to tag them I'm considering making more today or possibly tomorrow I'll have to think about it but I do know that I have to price tag that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that
Monday, so it is market day, and I'm headed over there right now. Right now it's 1.35, and my load-in time is at 2, and I checked my phone, and it must be traffic because it's going to take me, like I said, 25-ish minutes to get over there. Um, it's downtown, and it's from 4 to 10. It's like kind of like the TPD night market that I've done a bunch because it's like in the same location, but it's just like a different market. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty big because also we have a lot of stuff going on like around Lake Eola, just like the city of Orlando is having a Halloween thing tonight. So I have high hopes for tonight. Um, I think it's going to go good. I'm really excited that I finally have my manatee and my Florida pullovers. So I hope those are really good. And I think that my Halloween totes are really, really cute. So I definitely have high hopes. And so let's go and let's set up. what we are looking like I'm all set up I've got my grid wall here with my little totes and my tumblers so yeah those look really really cute and good and then I've got that rack with all my sweatshirts and my shirts and my mannequin tied it is very very windy so it's kind of making my table look a little bit silly so I've got my hats I've got my scrunchies because I have my scrunchies up there <laughs> you're good um, so I have my scrunchies up there but they were blowing off because really, really windy. So, and I've got my extended sizes right here. So I've got like my 2X and my 3X right here. And then I've got my Play-Doh for um, trick-or-treaters. I'm about to put these out. I kind of just put these here mostly to like fill the space. So I've got that all ready. It's really, really windy. So I didn't put my sign up because I didn't want my tent to fly away. But yeah, that's what we're looking like. So I have high hopes because I've had a lot of people come by and check out the tumblers before like, you know, it's not like four o'clock yet people were already checking out so yeah I'll check in later. Five o'clock check-in so I'm actually doing pretty good. I'm sitting around like $95 so that's really awesome. I sold one of the manatee sweatshirts and I sold a tumbler and a hat. Yeah so pretty good start. So we've got like you know, five more hours. I think this is the longest market I've ever done. I'm not sure. I think so. So yeah so I still have a lot of time. It is really really busy. There are a lot of people coming out because there's like a bunch of stuff like going on over here by Lake Eola. So I'm really excited to see where this night takes us. to the side but yeah i'm feeling good and feeling cool six o'clock check-in so we're actually doing pretty good we're sitting around 2 11 right now i don't remember what i sold in the last hour but it's still pretty good there's a lot of people coming around i am almost out of the play-doh 
that I was gonna try to make last today and tomorrow. So I started with 50 Play-Dohs and I'm about, I have like 12 left, I think. So yeah, I've had a lot of kids come by and take the Play-Dohs. Some came around more than once and took some, but I didn't call them out or anything like that. But yeah, so that's how it's going so far. So we still have like, you know, four more hours. So yeah, I, I have really high hopes for this. I think it's gonna go good. I definitely did not do a good job making sure I had enough of like tumblers because I'm down to one of the always be kind or be a kind person blue tumbler and one of the expensive and difficult tumbler. So I did a bad job restocking those. So it is what it is. But I'm gonna set you up and let you see what's going on. Officially, like all sold out of the expensive and difficult tumblers. I just have one more of the Be a Kind Human. So my mama tumblers look really lonely down here. I really thought that these were gonna like go really quickly, but no, not one yet. I mean, I've had a lot of people come look at them, but no takers yet. But here's what the whole circle is looking like. Pretty cool, pretty well lit. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Eight o'clock check-in, so we did really good the last hour. We're sitting at around 376 right now. So yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so we still have like two more hours left. So we got a lot of time to still do good. Um, I don't really have a ton of updates. Just that it's going good, so I'll check in in just a little bit. Actually, I guess I can say I ran out of Play-Doh a long time ago. I got a 50 pack from Sam's Club of the little smelly Play-Dohs. Um, they smell good, so the good smelling plate is. Um, I got those, and I thought that was gonna last me today and tomorrow's markets, but they were done. They were done, so kind of a bummer. But yeah, so we're good. Nine o'clock check-in, so we had no sales the last hour, which is like totally fine. It is definitely dying down a bit, so I think I might project that the next hour might also be zero dollars. But we're still at like 376, I think. So that's still good. I mean, I'm really, really happy with that. If I end the night with that, that'd be pretty cool. But there's been a lot of market drama, so I'll have to fill you in on all that later. So this next part, I decided to keep this one part so I could make a little PSA that if you are doing markets alone, be sure that you're aware of your surroundings and get to know your vendor neighbors. That guy you saw came up to my booth when I was breaking down and it was just kind of like talking gibberish to me. It was getting a little bit um, not very friendly and thankfully Grant was my neighbor and he checked on me during that whole interaction and I told him I was okay so it was fine. But I basically had to tell the guy over and over that the market was over until he finally just decided to walk away. So yeah, just be careful out there. Happy Sunday. So I'm kind of like in a weird position because I don't want to get like the sun in my face. But last night I ended up doing pretty good. So I made like 372, I think, in sales. And my booth fee was 55, and I had to pay like 10 dollars for parking. So 65 was like my cost, and so I made 372, which is pretty good. I didn't sell anything the last two hours, so it kind of like dropped off. So I mean, that's fine. I'm, I'm still really, really happy with a 372, but there was a lot of like vendor drama with like people leaving early, some people quitting, and there was just like a lot of weird stuff going on. So yeah, definitely the full moon was out last night. But yeah, so now I'm going to go to my next market. Um, setup begins at 10.30 and it goes from 12 to 4. I brought a bowl of candy since I'm out of Play-Doh. So I've got some candy with me. I've got some water. I got my fan. Um, I don't really know what to expect of today's market because it's in like the parking lot of a coffee shop, a coffee like slash ice cream shop. So I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping it's good because I feel like markets that go on like during the daytime tend to perform better for me. So yeah, so I hope it goes good. I replenished my, um, I did three of the expensive and difficult tumblers and I packed two more of the Be A Kind Human tumblers. 
and I also restocked the sizes of the Manatee Fan Club that I sold yesterday. So yeah, I hope it goes good and I'll see you when I get over there. to the last Orlando Local Makers event I did. It's gonna be way too loud, way too loud. So it's 11.56 and the market officially begins at 12. Um, I'm kind of like in a not, I don't know if I'm in like a that good a spot because like the parking lot is technically behind me but there's people set up behind me. So my space in front is just kind of like empty and other vendors. So like people kind of have to like walk like around to get to me. Um, but I guess if they're just browsing, they're gonna come around anyway. So yeah, it's not the best spot, but you know, we'll see how it goes. One o'clock check-in, so the music is like kind of like fading to the next one, so this is probably going to be the only time I have to talk. Um, so yeah, not a good first hour, zero dollars. We have three hours left. There's just not very many people. Um, so we'll just have to see how the next hour goes. I'll set you up and see if we can catch any action at all. There was a vendor there who was selling cinnamon rolls and she gave us one of them. So here is Ethan hooking me up so I didn't have to get my hands dirty. Much 
later. It's 5.37 right now, but we had to run to take all of the stuff to our like storage facility um, because we have, you know, my in-laws are visiting and we don't want to put the stuff like in the room that they're in. So we had to run over to the public storage and it closed at like five o'clock. So we were done and packed up and in the car at like 4.40. So we had to like get over there and just like unload the car as fast as possible. And then we had to go to Sam's Club to pick up some cupcakes that I got for the boys for their birthday. But a little bit of a womp womp. I asked for the icing to just be like plain white icing because like we try to do like die free in our house. Um, it's not a big deal. But they just made it regular. I mean it's obviously like really really cute. But I was trying to avoid that and I said white icing and no sprinkles so we're just gonna have to deal with it as it is but I don't know if you were able to see this in the footage but one of the vendors was like a cinnamon roll vendor and at the end she gave this to us and she was like passing out a bunch of different like cinnamon rolls so that was so nice but also another thing that happened which is kind of like funny because it's not happened for a while there was a period of time where it happened multiple times where someone bought something while I was packed up and I had to unpack like my POS and stuff like that so while we were packing up and like almost done I don't know if you probably you probably saw it in the footage I don't know if it was like in the correct like angle but someone came and bought a tote bag so that's good so that brought my total to 122 so that's good I mean I'm not like mad at it I guess um but I spent like $50 so I made 122 and I spent 50 so not the best I'm kind of getting a little bit used to like doing like good on weekend markets so I'm hoping I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more like Orlando local makers events except for I'm gonna try the art after dark and Lake Nona because Lake Nona is kind of like a big like expanding area in Orlando um, and it's really big and really nice and there's supposed to be a lot of foot traffic there So I'm gonna do an art after dark in late November early December I think so yes, I'm doing two of those. So I hope those go good But yeah, so this week was like pretty Crazy pretty hectic. Hold on. We're like turning So oh now I got bad lighting that one so yeah, so this week is pretty hectic. Next week is actually gonna be really, really hectic too. I'm probably gonna have to like break up the vlog into two different videos. One that's like just kind of like a prep one and the one that's the actual market because next week's market is actually kind of like, I don't wanna call it an expo because it's not really that, but it is like a two day event down in Jacksonville. So we're gonna be traveling down there on Friday night and then it's during the day from like 10 to five on Saturday and Sunday. So that's gonna be a lot. We had to get a hotel room. We rented a little U-Haul trailer. So that's gonna be like a lot of effort going into that. So I don't know if it's gonna be reasonable to be able to like get all of my weekly footage and then the weekend footage like put together. I think it might be too long and like I wouldn't be able to put it out for a while. So I think I'm gonna break that up into two because I also need to do a ton of prep for that just because you know, it, the booth fee to get in that is called uh, Market for Makers. It's like a big market that goes to like a bunch of different cities. Um, and the booth fee for that was, how much was it, Ethan? 700. Yeah. So I need to pack a lot of stuff and, because like I need to like, I want to be able to make back that 700 and then also to pay for like, you know, the hotel and like gas, like renting the U-Haul and stuff like that. So I'm trying to pack everything I can and like make as much inventory as I can so that I can try to make that back. And I'm just feeling like, if it costs seven hundred dollars to do it, I would hope that there'd be a lot of people. Yeah. So that is it for this week's vlog. I hope you liked it. It was a little bit hectic, a little bit chaotic. Um, but yeah, I I guess a total. I have to look it up. I'll put how much I made this week in my free market total up here and break it down. But yeah, hopefully next week goes really really good too. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Somebody, I say you don't cross my mind And she doesn't know that